please stand for our call to worship. His name is wonderful, hymn number 476. space, because we are here to worship Him. We'll begin with our announcements. Again, a call to the church calendar in our bulletin, what's coming up this week. But I got one here for our uh, the paper we're going to be collecting. So during the month of March, New Hope will be collecting copier paper and cardstock for Claremont Elementary School. And this is a great need for the school. And again, this is this is basically white or colored copier paper or white or colored cardstock. And bring that to the church any Sunday in March. And we have the cart, the, the shopping carts labeled for it, place it in the shopping cart. Again, we're collecting either white or colored copier paper or white or colored cardstock for Claremont Elementary School. So please think about that and make your donations during the Sundays in March into the shopping cart. Any other announcements for our congregation community at this time? We'll move into the, the birthday recognition at this time. And for our March birthdays, on the 1st, Allison Snyder, the 14th, Faye Ayers, the 16th, Nathaniel Wiles. Nathaniel, all right. <laughs> We've got a birthday coming up. The 17th, Cheryl Hendricks. Yay. The <laughs> Ooh, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> all right, on the 18th, Emily and Kimberly McDonald. And on the 21st, Travis Simpson. So let us join in our birthday song, hymn number 447. <laughs> of the congregation, just dump some notes on this, Jane Bumgarner and Bonnie Bumgarner, 
who have surgery, they're both home and they're all, they're both doing okay as expected. So that's good news. Uh, Richard Wiles, Susan's husband, is still in the hospital, so we definitely keep him in our prayers. And definitely, uh, you know, Pastor Betty, with your upcoming surgery, we be praying for her also. But we have a good many people on our list here, so what I'd like to do is spend a few moments in silent prayer for each of us to lift up our own concerns to God, and then I'll close us in prayer. At this time, let, let us pray. Almighty God, we come to you and we lift up to you for your compassionate, loving, caring hands. Mark and Melissa, for passing the Lucetta, nurturing them in that aspect, and also for taking care of Bonnie as she heals from her surgery. We lift up Steve and Jane for your healing power and your ability to provide patience during the healing process as Jane recovers from her knee surgery. Father, we lift up Susan, Catherine, and Richard Wiles for that healing spirit for Richard also for that comforting spirit for Susan and Catherine and Ken. Father, we lift up Keith Crow as he can keep and carry as they continue with their, their battle with cancer. There's blessings there and pray for many more to come. Father Libby Williams as she has some health issues. Giving her keeping her spirit up in these days. For Sharon Allen and the loss of Clyde, and your comforting spirit continue to be with her. Lord, when our world is darkened, give us light. When despair numbs our soul, give us hope. When we stumble and fall, lift us up. When doubts assail us, give us faith. When nothing seems sure, give us faith. When we lose our way, be our guide. Lead us, Lord, to find serenity in your presence and purpose in doing your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand and join me in reading the Liturgy for Lent 1 on page 72. Lord God, our Father in heaven, you have shown your great love toward us by sending your Son into the world to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. We give you thanks because you have made us worthy to share in the inheritance of the saints in light, having rescued us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your beloved Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins.
Lord God, Son, the Savior of the world, through though you were in the form of God, you did not consider equality with God something to cling to, but emptied yourself, taking the form of a servant, being born in human likeness. You humbled yourself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Your love compels us to live, not for ourselves, but for you. We give you thanks because you, our merciful and faithful high priest, have made reconciliation for the sins of the people. You were despised and rejected, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. You were wounded for our transgressions, you were bruised for our iniquities. Upon you fell the punishment that made us whole, and by your wounds we are healed. one with the Father and the Son. We give you thanks because you descended upon the Christ, anointing him to bring good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim relief to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed and proclaim the time of the Lord's favor. You fill our hearts with the love of God and make our bodies your holy temple. You may be seated. unbelief, from all defilement of the body and spirit, from all self-righteousness, from every neglect of our duty, from ingratitude and selfishness, from lukewarmness, from all indifference to your merit, meritorious life and death, deliver us, gracious Lord and God.
your holy incarnation and birth, by your early exile, by your pure and blameless childhood, by your willing obedience, by your humility, meekness, and patience, by your faithfulness in your earthly calling, by your fasting and temptation, by your perfect life before God and humanity. Bless and comfort us, gracious Lord and God. By your tears and agony, your crown of thorns and cross, lead us to repentance for our sins. By your willing sacrifice of yourself, even unto death, Make known to us the mystery of your love, and to your open arms stretched out upon the cross, receive us all. Please stand. precious blood, by your innocent suffering and dying, by your rest in the grave, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, bless us and save us, Christ Jesus our Redeemer. Fulfill in us your prayer that all who love you may be one, as you are in the Father, and the Father in you. Hear us and help us, gracious Savior. You have made God known to us as Father, that the love with which he has loved you may be in us. And in you in us. Christ, and him crucified, remain our confession of faith. you entered worship today, you had the opportunity to give of your tithes and your offerings. Always remember that it is to God that we give our praises, our prayers, and our gifts. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and holy God, as we come before you today, Lord, we come to you in all humility and come with our hands open, Lord open in order to give, to give back to you, to give to you the God of abundance, to give to you the God who is never sparing to give to his children, to give back to you so much and just a small portion of what you have given to us. You have blessed us in so many ways. So Lord, let us give not out of our scarcity, but out of our plenty. Lord, we pray that you will bless the giver. May all that is given be used to spread the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Let us now transition our hearts into the hearing and the reading of God's holy word. Today our scripture text comes from Genesis 12, 1 through 4, Psalms 121, Romans 4, 1 through 5, and the Gospel of John 3, 1 through 17. Hear now the holy word of God. Genesis 12, 1 through 4. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Psalm 121, I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. One who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. Romans 4, 1 through 5. Abraham was, humanly speaking, the founder of our Jewish nation. What did he discover about May being made right with God? If his good deeds had made him acceptable to God, he would have had something to boast about. But that was not God's way. For the scriptures tell us, Abraham believed God, and God counted on him as righteous because of his faith. When people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they have earned. But people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in God, who forgives sinners. John 3, 1 through 17. There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? 
Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants. Just as you can hear the wind but cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. How are these things possible? Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, You are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things? I assure you, we tell you what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned. But the Son of Man has come down from heaven. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word today, and may he give to each one of us clear understanding. I invite you to stand for a hymn of preparation, What Wondrous Love Is This, hymn number 328. God, today we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your abounding love for us. We thank you for the gift of love to us each and every day. This morning we come with hearts that desire to praise and adore you. We thank you for your mercy and your grace that is new to us each and every day. We pray, Lord, that you might be merciful and gracious to those who have gone astray. May they come back to you. 
Help us to embrace and hold fast to your unchangeable truth. During the season of Lent, we ask that you remind us of ourselves and our struggles and our difficulties and the darkness that surrounds us. We ask that you remind us of all the goodness that you have placed in our lives and those that you have placed in our lives, whatever our circumstances may be. Lord, in the midst of our weaknesses, we ask that you would make us strong and that you would let your light shine through us in our weakness, that your power would manifest itself through us. Lord, that you would trade the ashes of our lives for the beauty of your presence. You are sovereign. We thank you, Lord, for the victory, the victory that comes through Jesus Christ and no other. We thank you, Lord, that you are working in our lives each and every day. And we thank you, Lord, for the greatness, for your greatness in our lives, for your love. Lord, this morning, I thank you for my voice. I thank you for the ability that you've given me to speak your truth. I ask that you would fill my mouth with your words. In the name of Christ Jesus, the name that is above every name. Amen. Well, the 14th century monk announced to the people of his village that he was going to preach the greatest sermon ever preached. And it was going to be on the love of God. He promoted it and he urged everyone to attend. At the 11th hour, the cathedral filled with young and old alike. Throughout the service, everyone anticipated the monk's great message. However, when it was time for his sermon, the monk did not enter the pulpit. Instead, he went to a candelabra and pulled out a long burning candle from its stand. And then he walked to the highest point of the altar where there hung a sculpture form of Christ nailed to the cross. The monk silently lifted the candle and the glow of its flame rested just below one of Christ's pierced hands. He held the candle there and his back to the congregation. Then shifting his weight, he moved the candle below Jesus' other pierced hand. Slowly he moved the candle to Christ's side, where the spear had pierced it. Finally, the monk dropped to his knees in prayer, holding the glimmering light so that the glow fell on Christ's nail-pierced feet. After a moment, the monk stood up. And he turned toward the people, holding the candle before him so the people could see the gentle tears on his face. He said, My beloved people, this is my sermon on the love of God for you. And then he dismissed his congregation with the benediction. Now don't get too excited. We're not going to be leaving yet. I do have a few things that I would like to say about God's love. But what a beautiful and visual picture of the candle glowing on Jesus' piercing. His hands, his side, his feet. And he did this for us. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, his only begotten Son, so that everyone who would believe in him might not perish but have eternal life. This is probably the one message and the one verse in the Bible that most people know. Even those who don't believe will know John 3.16 usually. Strange. 
that they would not accept Christ after knowing that verse. And that verse sums up the message of the Bible and what Jesus has done for the whole world. It's a message that everyone needs to hear. God so loved the world. You know, God created the world and he created it good. Creation account in Genesis tells us this. And God was pleased with the creation. And then we know the story, sin entered. John 1, 1 tells us the word became flesh. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. All things came through God, and without him nothing can be. Think about that. All things came through God, and without him nothing can be. In essence, God knew that mankind needed a Savior, someone to redeem them from their sins. So he sent Jesus. He sent his Son. St. Augustine writes in his confessions, You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. I think Augustine's words capture what resonate deep in every human being, a sense of restlessness, not feeling that sense of commit commitment or contentment within without Jesus Christ. Restless, trying to find other things in the world to fill up the emptiness that one might feel. Until the Holy Spirit lives and dwells within us, we're lacking, we're not content. We need the Holy Spirit to help us not to feel empty, to help us feel that contentment to lead and guide us in the way that the Lord would have us to go. The dark world needs Christ. We look around and we see, we see all the things in our world and we see how dark the world is around us. And I don't know about you, but at times it seems like it's getting darker and darker. You stand and I find myself just shaking my head like a bobby doll thinking I cannot believe that things have gone in the direction that they're going. And good Christian people are accepting them. John 3.19 states, The light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light. This has been true all throughout the Bible. Look at Sodom and Gomorrah. In Genesis 13 and 19. Look at Acts and talking about the Sadducees. They preferred the darkness. The world needs a Savior. And the world needs us to be shouting that out to them. Shouting it out, maybe not necessarily just with our verbal words, but with our actions, our deeds, the things that we do. The way we live our lives, shouts of our belief, if we have faith, if we believe. You know, faith is, you can't see things with faith. You're walking almost in a sense, you're in walking through the darkness, but you believe. You believe, you have hope that God is with you. And that God is going to help to walk you through whatever you might be going through. You don't know what that may be. Look at Nicodemus. I thought it wasn't strange that Nicodemus would come in the dark. Nicodemus was searching. And you remember, as Ashley read, Nicodemus didn't understand what Jesus was saying to him. What do you mean? 
Have we ever said that? Lord, I don't understand. What do you mean? What do you want me to do? And sometimes the things that the Lord leads us to do, it's not always so clear. I say that God uses other people. He uses our circumstances. And he uses scripture to guide us. And I always have those things to line up when I have a lot of questions about things. And I'm one, I, I need a little more confirmation, so I will say, Lord, maybe you can hit me again with that. Maybe you can let me hear that again. I need, I need a better understanding about this. Because I'm not really sure this is the way that you're wanting me to go. I'm sure you're with me. And I believe that. But am I going in the right direction? Something we need to think about. May not always be easy. Jesus said humans can reproduce only human life. But the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. Being washed of the water and then being washed of the Spirit. Jesus goes on to tell about that as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. I'm visual. That's a visual to me. Is it a visual to you? Yeah. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Think about that. God loved us so much that he was willing to sacrifice his son for us, to die on the cross for us. Jesus paid our sin debt in full. He paid a sin debt that we could not pay for ourselves, and he paid it in full. And I've told you repeatedly it is not the nails. Yes, he has the scars. But it was not the nails that held him on that cross. But it was great love for us. His obedience to the Father. And his great love for us. Each and every one of us. We're the apple of his eye. He treasures us. He has great things in store for us in our lives. So important. When Jesus is referring and talking to Nicodemus about that the uh, Moses will lift up the serpent, um, and then he's talking, and so must the Son of Man, he's talking about uh, the book of Numbers, Numbers 21, when the Israelites were wandering in the desert and leaving Egypt for Cana. You remember the story. Many were bitten by snakes and many died. The Lord said to Moses to make a serpent out of a bronze and put it up on a pole and anyone who was bitten who looked at it would recover. Jesus' words drove home the need for Moses to lift up the serpent in the desert on the pole and also that the Son of Man would be lifted up. The antidote or solution for sin was Jesus on the cross for us. His shed blood would wash us clean. Whiter than snow. And yet, think about it. This gift of eternal life is totally unmerited for us. Because we don't deserve it. We are sinners saved by grace. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear that. They like to hear that they are just perfect and that they are not sinners. But believe me, we're sinners saved by God's grace. And when we think about Ephesians, it talks about God who in his rich mercy, because of his great love that he had for us, 
But even when we were dead in our transgressions, he brought us to life in Christ Jesus. So there can be no question as to who was sacrificed for us, for the sins of the world. And it cost God his son, his beloved son. Think about that. How many people would be willing to give their child for someone else? Jesus paid our sin debt. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son for us. When you think about how good God is to us, you know, you can have a pity party a lot of times in the things and what's going on in your life. But if you really stop and reevaluate things that have happened in your life, you can always be so grateful and so thankful for what God has done in your life. The rich things and the way he has blessed you in so many ways. Many times blessings come when things, when God basically says, no, don't go this way. I've had people that said maybe a time when they were going to marry someone else. But they didn't feel that that was what they were being led to do. And they changed their mind. And later they realized how grateful they were that God had led them to a godly person to marry. Being led by the Holy Spirit Submitting yourself and being totally committed to God. Think about Abraham. We talked about it in Sunday school. Think about just uprooting yourself. He was 75 years old. And yet he was willing to obey God. And believed for something that he could not see. I can understand, can't you, why Sarah thought he's lost it. He's 75, he's lost it. Yeah, but they did. They went anyway. And you know, many times the rich blessings of God are not, and that gratification does not come early on. It comes later. Sometimes I've even said, I wonder maybe, you know, it's one of those things that we may not know the real true blessings of all these things this side of heaven. Many blessings in our life that God is so willing to give us. And many times we close those doors. Because we're not willing to be committed to him. We're not willing to stand up and acknowledge him. To tell others about him. What a blessing it is. I love it when I can sit down and talk to people and tell people, how the Lord has blessed my life in so many ways. So many ways in the things that he has done. And I hope you do that too. I hope you tell people how good God is and how great his love is. A young boy was sitting on a park bench and he had his hands resting on an open Bible. And he was loudly shouting his praises to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, God is great, he yelled without concern if anyone heard him or not. After a while, along came a man who was a professor at a local university. Feeling himself very educated and enlightened in the ways of truth and eager to show that he knew much more than this young boy. He asked the boy about the source of his joy and excitement. Mister, replied the boy with intense excitement, do you have any idea what God is able to do? How, how much he loves us? I just read that God opened up the ways of the Red Sea and led the whole nation of Israel right through the middle. The professor laughed. 
He sat down next to the boy, and he decided to open the boy's eyes to the reality of the miracles of the Bible. Well, he said, that can all be easily explained, my friend. Modern scholars today have shown that the Red Sea was only 10 inches deep during the time, that time of the year. Thus, there was no problem. The Israelites just waded across. The boy looked a little puzzled. His eyes wandered from the man back to the Bible that lay open on his lap. The professor convinced that he had enlightened this poor, naive young boy to the finer points of scientific insight, he turned to leave. But scarcely had he taken two steps when the boy began to rejoice and praise God even louder than he did before. The man turned to ask the reason for this resumed excitement. Wow, exclaimed the boy, God is greater than I thought. Not only did he lead the whole nation of Israel through the Red Sea, he topped it off by drowning all the whole Egyptian army in just 10 inches of water. Our God is a big God. He can do what he wants to do. And he created the world good. And yet sin entered. And then he brought Jesus. Jesus came into our lives to make our lives better to make others' lives better. But we have to accept him and receive him. To receive him as our Savior. And so when we think about how our lives have changed, I ask you today, there are so many things in your lives that have changed over the past years. If we live, things are going to change. It just happens. And I ask you to really reflect and look and see what may be what some impossible things that God has done in your life. Things that you never thought that would ever happen in your life. And a lot of, thing, a lot of times these are not always good things that happen. But there's good that comes out of them. So God is in the midst of it. So when you really think about, there can be no greater love than God's love for us. And there can be no greater love than our love for God. And our love for Jesus Christ. And for what he has done for us. You know, like the young boy, let us not forget to tell others about what God has done in our lives may seem menial to you. But you could tell someone something that God has done in your life. And it could change the life of someone else. We never know. We never know. And I tell people, wherever you are, that's your ministry. If it's in a school line and you're there with other parents, that's your ministry. If it's at a meeting, that's one of your ministries. It's in the grocery line, wherever. Wherever you are, that's an opportunity for you to minister to someone else. You never know what your kind words, your upbeat feeling of acknowledging your faith, thanking God, thanking God for a beautiful day today. The sun's out thanking him, whatever, can nudge that person to think, this person is thanking God. We never know. We never know the opportunities that God is going to open to us. We never know. But we trust him. And we go forth in faith. In what may seem like a time that has been prolonged, like in Abraham's life, this man was 75 years old and he had waited all this time and didn't have a son. But he believed God and he had faith. 
Nicodemus believed God. He believed that Jesus was who he said he was. All throughout the Bible, there's people repeatedly that they believed. They believed. So I pray that our hearts are uplifted today to realize and praise the one who came to save us from ourselves, to save us from our sins, that we might have eternal life and that we would one day be with the Lord. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and compassionate God, Lord, we ask that you accept our prayers today and that you give us the strength to sustain ourselves as we daily take up our cross and follow you. We thank you, Lord, that you shower us each day with your agape love. And that you lead us away from the things that could bring spiritual death in our lives. Lord, help us to breathe the air that you put before us to breathe in your strength and power and to hold on to all that you have brought before us through our eternal life. Let us start living our eternal life now. Let us live out your glory upon this earth and let us share the richness of your glory with others. Lord, let us be the ones that help to open up the eyes of those who are blind, those who are in prison. Lord, help us to be the ones. Send us, Lord, to the places that we might minister to those who are lost and who are in need of a Savior. Use each one of us. Lord, we thank you. We thank you this day for your great love. We thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross for us, for our sins. We thank you, Lord, that he paid our sin debt in full. <clears throat> He paid a sin debt that we could not pay for ourselves. And yet you were willing to sacrifice your son for us. Even in our sinfulness, you still loved us. And you wanted to gather us into yourself. And Jesus came to pay our sin debt. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. There can be no greater love than your love for us. Lord, I pray that we will love you back and love you with all of our being, with all of our hearts, our bodies, our souls, our minds. Let us live our lives for you. Let us live our lives in a way that others will see you in us. That they will see the living Christ living in us. And that their lives might be changed also. We love you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for loving us. For it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 
I invite you to please stand for our hymn of departure, Jesus, Life of All the World, hymn number 363. abounding agape love and peace. May the blessing of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit go with you. May the three in one radiate in you to others, and may you praise the glory of Jesus.